Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me for the No Blogger Left, for, Left Behind pre-series. My name is Denise Lonas of the Lonas Group, and I'm joined today with creator of No Blogger Left Behind, Francis Lynn Thorson. I am thrilled that the No Blogger Left Behind series is going to be launching very soon. We're very, very excited. And what we wanted to do today was to give you a little bit of a taste of what the No Blogger Left Behind series is going to be covering. And no, the No Blogger Left Behind program was created by Frances because she really wanted everybody that is in the industry, every agent out there, to have an opportunity to really use blogging as a strong lead generation system. And the No Blogger Left Behind series is going to cover everything from the basics to the most advanced parts of blogging, everything that you possibly need to know, want to know, or could ever even implement in your business to do with blogging. You're going to learn about it in the No Blogger Left Behind series. The No Blogger Left Behind series is a very, very practical business-based approach to blogging, how it really works, how to really take your blog to the next level, how to, to really get great traffic and conversion. And uh, it's also, most importantly, about how do you take a blog and translate that into money, into dollars and cents in your business. So today we're going to be talking about domain names and how do you choose a domain name for your blog. Are there rules that you need to be following? What are the keys to choosing a great domain name? So Fran, we're going to start out right there. I think it's a great place to start. Why is the domain name of your blog so important? Does it really matter? And are there rules for choosing a domain name? Um, it, yes, it does matter, and yes, there are. There are basically four rules that we're going to talk about. There are, uh, when, when it comes to, to picking a domain name, it's very, very important. Um, there is, there is relevance. There is traffic. There is um, commerciality, and and there is competition. And those are, those, are, those, are the, those are the four things that we're going to talk about at great length. Those are the four considerations, the four key considerations. In picking a, don a domain name, you know, a domain name is going to be one of the most important decisions that you'll make when you start a blog, um, because it's something that's going to identify you to your market. It's going to be something that identifies you to the search engines. It's going to be something that is going to help you be found. Um, and 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 picking the right domain name is is absolutely key. It's, it's interesting. When I started, um, you know, doing my first stuff on the web years ago, you know, around you know before before the the millennium changed, um, the, the 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 thinking was the the conventional thinking at the time was put it in your name. So my very first domain name purchase was francisflintorson dot com, uh, and I did okay with that domain name. But you know, people who were going to be coming to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, looking for a house, didn't jump onto Google, you know, from from New York and say, oh, I want to find out, you know, where Francis Flint Horson is, because she did, they didn't know who I was. Right. Um, and it was other keywords that took them to my website. Um, so, so, so having your name as part of a domain name is is definitely very, very passe, you know, for real estate agents. Um, if your name is Barbara Bush and you moved, you just moved back to Texas and you got your real estate license after spending eight years in Washington, you know, you want to buy BarbaraBush.com because that's, and you know, people who know that you have a real estate license and your name is Barbara Bush is going to make that work for you. But for most agents, that's not going to work. And what you want to do is you want to take a look at your market, see who you want to attract, what it is about your market um, that will be driving those search engine spiders and picking a name accordingly. And I think one of the big mistakes that people do make, Fran, is they, they believe that their name is the best name for a blog. But one of the things that you have to do and think about when you are choosing a domain name is what industry am I in? And, you know, what am I doing in my industry? Do I have an area of specialty? Do I have a particular niche market? If I was a client going online to search for this particular industry, what would I be searching? So I think that when people are choosing a domain name, they're going to be better served if they choose the domain name as though they were the client looking for your particular business, if you know what I mean. I think it's we have to get away from what I call ego-based domain names where it's just all about us. Really think about the client. If you're in real estate, um, maybe you need a, a blog with the word real estate in it. You know, if you are a specialist in a particular area, maybe your blog needs to have that name. Maybe it's a particular neighborhood. You know, maybe it's a particular niche market that you're in. 
Uh, maybe you're an equestrian property expert in Texas. Maybe you have a, you know, Texas equestrian property blog. But is that going to serve you better than, you know, John Smith, equestrian property expert? I think yes, definitely. So I, I agree that relevance is really, really important. Talk with us, Fran, a little bit about the traffic side of, you know, the, you know that's another rule of choosing the domain name. First you have relevance, but now we have traffic. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, and I'll, and I'll also talk in terms of, of some searches I've been doing recently in real estate because, as as you know, we're doing some work with HUD Homes. We have a you know a new HUD Homes website coming up, so I've been doing a lot of keyword research about that. We have a website called GovernmentHomesaleProfessional.com that we're getting ready to launch. Um, but I've been looking also at the keywords that are attached to that and the traffic that's attached to some of those keywords, and some of that is quite remarkable. For instance, the word HUD, the, the, the keyword phrase HUD Homes generates about 368,000 global searches every single month. And so at first glance, you could look and just say, oh, then that needs to be what I need to be concentrating on, HUD homes. But, but no, not really. Um, that, that's where the, the competition comes in. Because there's enough competition in that HUD homes field that, that, uh, that you're very, very, you know, almost next to impossible uh, ever going to get on the front page of Google with that. And, and where you want to be in your traffic is on the front page of Google. You have, you know, anything less than that doesn't work. Um, the, the thought that you can get on the first page of Google with HUD homes isn't very, very good. But I had a quite a remarkable aha uh, when I found out that my Facebook page, of all things, was, was on the front page of, a, of some search results for, for HUD homes training and also for just for HUD, home, HUD homes for sale. Um, you can go to Google and take a look at the Google Keyword Tool. It's a free tool. They developed that for people who are advertising on Google. But you can go to the Google Keyword Tool and you can take a look at any of those search terms, any of those search phrases, those keyword phrases, and find out how many searches there are for, for, that, for those phrases. And you can also take a look at the competition factor. We talk about competition also. So do you have, are you up against the HUD, you know, HUD.gov and are you up against websites that have been around for a long time where you're never going to get to the first page? Or can you start working with some keyword phrases that will give you an ability, you know, to, to, to catch some of those searches? Um, everybody who's on the front page of Google has a different chance of click. So let's say you've got 100 a hundred clicks that happen in an, in an hour on Google. Well, the, the first one is going to get uh, it has about a 35 percent chance of getting the clicks. Um, those numbers are happen in descending the numbers all the way down to the tenth search, which which gives you about a two percent. So you have, if you're on the first page of Google, you have anywhere of from a two percent chance of your number ten to about a 35 percent chance if you're the first one listed in the organic search results of getting those clicks. Now. When you take that 100 search number and you say you've got 100,000 or 200,000, that becomes very, very meaningful. But it's also meaningful if there are just 1,000 searches because if, it's, if there are 1,000 searches with a keyword term, let's say, uh, let's say you're, you're in Columbus, Ohio, and you want HUD homes in Columbus, there are about five or 600 searches a month that happen in HUD homes Columbus. And there's very, very little competition for that. So you may even be able to get two or three spots on that first page and, and be able to convert those, those, uh, those, those buyers to, to leads. So it's not about necessarily looking for the most traffic. What you want is relevant traffic, and you want traffic where you stand a chance, where you, where you have, can, can have something of a competitive edge and, uh, and, and, and you know, have some keywords that are, um, you know, have some commercial value. The commercial value of keywords, by the way, is, is the value that, that Google gives it when, when you're searching, uh, when you're using, buying those search terms and finding yourself on the first page under sponsored results, you know, as an ad rather than getting there organically. And the other thing, I want to spend some time just talking a little bit about commerciality because I think it's really important because I think people get confused with this because, for example, I know some people will – set up their website, they will do their keyword research, they find a, a phrase that definitely passes, let's say, the first three golden rules. So it's relevant to the site, it's got high levels of traffic, and it even has an acceptable level of competition. However, let's even say that um, that agent then goes and optimizes their website. 
and now they are number one in Google. That does not necessarily mean that that's going to translate into money because unless that phrase is targeted to a target audience that actually is going to spend money, it, it has no value. So just talk a little bit about commerciality and that example, Fran, because I think that's really important. People need to understand that it's not just always about traffic. It's about targeting a high level of commerciality versus the a phrase that maybe has a low level of commerciality. Well, sure, and I think that this is this is you know this gets to be to the point of of really having a niche focus, you know, having you know, fine tuning your prism, seeing what it is that you're really working for. You know, broad terms like real estate, like home sales, that covers an awful lot of stuff. Um, but, but when you have people looking, they're not looking for real estate. They're looking for a neighborhood. They're looking for a quality of life. They're looking for lifestyle amenities. And so connecting your business um, with the types of things that people are looking for that are a good fit for you in terms of what you're selling people is, is what's going to count. So that's going to bring the, 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 the targeted traffic, you know, um, using the relevant keywords, you know, putting those relevant keywords, making them part of your domain name. Um, and putting them to work for you in conjunction with a keyword strategy on your website that that um, that is included in the title of your of your main page, your home page, in the titles of the sub pages on your website, in the titles of your blog posts, and in, in in the text that you have, in the categories and the tags. You know, all of these all of these keywords are things that get tied together and and linked together in in ways that are very, very important to the search engine spiders. That's one of the things we're going to talk about in No Blogger Left Behind. It's, it's how to actually create a, uh, you know, a feast of keywords that will just be irresistible to those search engine spiders. Um, you know, there, there, there are ways that you, can, that you can do that. There are ways, just, just in, the simple, in the simple operation of linking text, and, and, and writing about an article and linking the appropriate words in the in your text to the actual link and, and a destination, you know, when, when people make that click. That simple operation is extremely um, important because search engine spiders are keenly, keenly drawn to to the right text and link combinations. That text that you highlight and put your link is called anchor text. Um, you know, a lot of people are still using anchor text that says click here or you know or or see here or whatever. Um, when 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 the anchor text that is relevant to your subject um, is is going to have much more uh, much more opportunity and, and and will invite much more spiders. So it's and the other, the other thing that I really want agents to understand and, or managers, owners, brokers, is that quality trumps quantity. So if you have relevant keywords plus really good targeted traffic, it will equal sales, provided you are able to convert, provided you're able to follow up, and provided you're able to provide great client care just as you would with any other lead generation system. So, Fran, that's a lot of great information for today. I'm really looking forward to the launch of the No Blogger Left Behind series, and I want to just encourage anyone, if you have any questions whatsoever about the No Blogger Left Behind series, um, we're going to be blogging about it and talking about it, and we're going to be uh, also sharing some more videos. So please be on the lookout for the No Blogger Left Behind series. And, Fran, thank you for joining me today, and I'm really looking forward to our upcoming launch. Thank you so much. Thanks, listeners.